I've been meaning to do this video for a while. Some of you may have noticed in some of our recent videos, probably going back over the last few months, um, our target camera footage has increased in quality uh, extremely over what we were using before. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, is this Nikon Monarch uh, spotting scope or field scope, if you would. Uh, this is a, a relatively new field scope uh, from Nikon. So it's, it's basically kind of their uh, mid-range field scope. Uh, you may remember the, the pro staffs. Those are around, I want to say like five or 600 bucks. Uh, and then taking a step up above that, like a, a big step rather, they have the EDGs, which I believe are the digital ones. Uh, and those are like around five grand. Uh, so this is kind of like the middle ground. Uh, this model right here is the 20 to 60 by 82 mil with the angled, angled body and eyepiece. Um, this is what I've been using for the past couple months. Um, and I absolutely love it. So this guy comes in around. Uh, street price uh, is varying, of course, where you spit, where you where you want to pick it up at. So you're looking at between 1,200 to 1,600 roughly. So as far as compared to other spotting scopes on the market that you may already be familiar with, um, and I'll roll in some footage of of using this guy over the past couple of months as I'm kind of running my mouth here. But as far as comparison to other spotting scopes on the market that you may be familiar with. Uh, you're talking Vortex Razor HD line uh, as far as price and quality goes. In fact, if you were to make a direct comparison, you could compare this right to the Razor HD 27 to 60 by 85 mil, which is their biggest, um, highest end Razor HD spotting scope. Uh, and the price range is, is basically right there. So you're looking at, again, between $1,200 to $1,600. Um, the difference in those two uh, is really going to be um, the low end power, which the Monarch has in this case. So the Monarch is a 20 power to 60 power, whereas the Razor is a 27 to 60. So you're getting an additional seven power on the low end, which is really going to help um, when you're shooting uh, targets that are up close or even not even necessarily shooting targets. I mean, these field scopes are used by uh, a variety of different people for a variety of different things to include uh, bird watching, um, you know, sporting events, whatever, you know, these, these are used for a lot of different things. I just happen to use it for uh, mostly target shooting, you know, hunters out there use this stuff as well. Um, maybe not quite something this big, especially if you're backpacking. Um, but again, on the low end, you're really going to have a little bit of an advantage over the, the, the Razor HD in that comparison uh, in getting on target and finding your target uh, is going to be helpful as well, especially if you don't have some type of um, big setup with like maybe like a red dot mounted to get you within the vicinity like a, a lot of the, the precision shooters will do. Um, on the higher end, they're both uh, are a 60 power optic. Uh, the Razer has um, three millimeters uh, greater objective. So in that case, you're probably gonna have a little bit bigger field of view just by a hair. It might collect a little bit more light, uh, but again, there's such a small difference uh, in the objective lens. Um, that part really doesn't bother me so much. In fact, I think I prefer having that extra seven power on the bottom as opposed to having an extra three millimeters on the objective. So anyway, moving past the comparisons and kind of just talking about this uh, this particular version right here and some of the features that it offers um, and why you guys might want to consider it at least. Uh, again, I just wanted to show it to you here. This is what I've been using for my spotting scope. I've been hooking up a, uh, a phone scope mount and using my iPhone 6S to record pretty much all of the video you've seen through this guy right here. Uh, it does have an included sunshade that's attached. Uh, it doesn't spin. It kind of just moves straight out and straight back in in a nice fluid motion. So if you are um, uh, shooting uh, into the light or into the sun, um, this is nice to extend. Um, we find that sunshades really aren't really that beneficial unless you have a lot of incoming light, uh, you know, like at your 12 o'clock. Uh, but other than that, it's, it is really nice to have. I, I do like that they included this um, and it's nice too. It's not like a, a cheap piece, of course. It's a, it's a nice quality there. And kind of looking at the camera there, you can see how big that objective is. Um, this thing is awesome. I've used this thing in some really low light. And looking through this is is pretty much, I mean, it, it, feels, it feels better and it feels like it collects more light than the naked eye. So you look through this at night and you feel like you can see better um, and even see more light sometimes. It just kind of, I don't know if it's one of those illusions or, or what, but the finish is kind of a black speckled finish. Um, that I kind of got that at first and kind of thought that was a little bit strange until I um, looked at it closer and, and realized that that's how they intended it. So it's kind of a 
unique little finish there. Your focus is in the middle and it's this big ring. It's, it's unmistakable of what this is. So there's no small little focus ring or you know like a fine to tune and a coarse to tune that you have to use with one finger and worry about making sure you're on the right one. They're using one large focus. And the, the idea here um, there is that one is gonna be easy to find and get on, but also they're not using uh, a traditional linear uh, focus. This spotting scope uses a, a varying focus speed or what I would call a progressive focus. So really what you have on, on the low end is a, a more coarse adjustment. Um, and as you get higher into the, the focus range, basically you'd be focusing for a target further away. As you get further out, that focus starts to get a little bit more fine. So you have a pretty fast, quick, coarse focus on the bottom. When you get to the mid range, you have a medium level of focus. And then when you get to the high end of the range, which is where you'd be spotting targets at pretty far away, you know, a thousand plus yards. Um, I've even used this to look at the moon at night on, on some clear nights, which uh, is has really worked out for some great quality uh, pictures and video. We'll roll some of that stuff in here now. Um, just kind of an additional fun thing I just wanted to try out and, and do. Uh, it's really nice. So we, again, fast focus on the bottom. And as you get up into the power range or into the, the distances, the, the, the focus becomes a lot more fine. So it's really nice and really quick to get on targets that are at close range. Um, and it's easy to get out to those further further distances and then fine tune it. Moving back, we have the lens. Uh, again, this is the angled version. The, the angle is built into the body, of course. The lens is kind of just attached to the body here. Attachment, super easy. It locks in via the rear. Uh, and this is the, the 20 to 60. So there's a, there's a couple of varying lenses that you can get for this. Um, this one just comes with the package and everything. So there's a, uh, an eye, eye piece here that can get you away from the lens if you're wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. Uh, or if you want to mount something up to this. Your power range is right here, and this moves super smooth, um, and it just marks low and marks high, so there's no 20 power, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, or whatever, it's just low and high, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't really care to know what power level I'm on so much. Um, just knowing low and high is, is fine by me. The lens does not have any built-in minute of angle or uh, MRAD grid or anything like that for using as a, as a spotting scope uh, and making corrections or calling corrections for, for a shooter. Um, so that's something I think that I would probably like to see at least an option for. Uh, and some other scopes uh, within this price range do, do have an offering for a, a lens that does have that. Um, Nikon does not. Uh, I, I would love to see that. It'd be a nice little chair on top if it was an option but at the same time I don't get too hooked on it uh, because I it, it is a little bit uh, it's clear it doesn't um, you know busy up the reticle a lot of times you really just want to spot um, spot splash or or see bullet trace uh, going through the air uh, and, and stuff like that so the the offerings in this price range that do have a built-in um, MRAD or MOA uh, reticle used for spotting um, are usually on the lower end in the power range so you're looking at like 20 to 30 X roughly, maybe up to 40. It really depends. And they're usually a fixed power. So uh, for the offerings in this range that do have that option, um, it really just depends on your use and where you're shooting it. Maybe you, maybe you need more power if you're shooting really long ranges. In those cases, I think I'd still stick to the, the, the option that gives you a little bit more magnification, um, a little bit smaller field of view, but you get that magnification and that's really going to come in handy for those long shots. So I don't want to get too deep into like angled spotting scopes versus straight body spotting scopes. Basically what we're referring to is there is either a lens coming off straight or a lens being angled. Uh, there's pros and cons to each. The angled, the really big con or pro is that it's much easier for um, someone of varying heights or just to set it up uh, and someone just to come up and look at it. Um, it's also much easier to look at targets that are up as opposed to down, whereas the opposite is true with the straight. So again, personal preference there. I'm not going to get too much into that. I will say, however, that um, no, the the uh, the lens itself does not move. The body and everything is is fixed. However, the mount here that connects to the spotting scope does in fact loosen and it's on a, a spinner here. So you can loosen this and spin the whole body left or right. And here it has those audible click marks. So you can put it at like a like a 90 degree angle if you want and mount it up. Uh, so if you're looking at this from a lower angle, maybe you have it mounted in a vehicle, you can do that. Uh, most of the time I have mine in this fashion, just normally mounted up because it's on a tripod um, and I have a camera attached to it, but it does have the ability to spin. Uh, it does come with a, uh, a soft cover, which is pretty nice actually, has a nice strap. 
Um, everything's pretty robust. It has two covers, one for the objective lens, one for the eyepiece. So it's nice that I don't have to worry about this thing getting beat up. Uh, I can just kind of throw the covers on, throw it over my shoulder and then chuck it in the car um, and not have to worry about the thing getting beat up. The only downside of the soft cover is that, that feature I showed you before where you can loosen this up uh, and spin the optic if you want to view it from other angles other than right over the top. Um, it does not really work when you have the soft cover on. So that's the only downside. So that's pretty much about it as far as the features that are kind of built into this thing. Uh, as far as how much I've liked it, I've loved this thing. This thing has been awesome up until this point. I've really kept my eye out for a good spotting scope because I've really needed one, especially for what I do. Um, recording good um, uh, target camera shots and good long range shots through a, through a phone or some type of video, especially when you're doing like picture in picture like I like to do, um, is really key and I've liked how this thing has really increased not only the quality of the videos, but um, how we're able to throw a spotter, um, even someone inexperienced behind the scope, look at it through a phone um, and just give us immediate feedback on where those bullets are impacting, uh, whether they're on target or whether they're calling splash. Glass quality is superb. I've had no complaints whatsoever with the quality of the glass. Everything is super clear, collects light extremely well. Low light has not been a problem. Whether I'm using this um, kind of late at night to look at birds just for fun, or again, the moon, um, or targets, it's, it's, been, it's been perfect. It's, it's far exceeded any of my expectations. And in fact, I would say if you're interested in something like this, jump on the website and check out all like the individual specs because there's a lot of stuff out there that I probably can't even cover in this type of video. So swing over there and check those out if you want. Um, I can't really compare this side by side to any of the other things on the market. In fact, I don't even like commenting on how the glass quality compares to another optic of um, similar price or in the same uh, you know, zone, just because it's so hard to say without comparing them both side by side. Um, I've used the 27 to 60 Razor HDs. Um, I've used the, the smaller power Razor HDs, in fact, uh, we, uh, we've we used the um, the step down below the 27 to 60. Jordan has one of those in a straight uh, straight body. And comparing those side by side, uh, I would say glass quality is probably pretty similar. Um, in fact, the in that case, I would say the Nikon probably edged it out a little bit because again, that glass uh, picks up so much more light. It, just think, it makes things look really clear. Um, the the field of view and the eye relief on the the Nikon were far better than the Razor in that case. Again, it's not an apples to apples comparison, um, and again, that objective is really going to help on the Nikon. But the the eye relief was night and day between the Nikon and the Vortex. In that case, the Nikon had much greater eye relief, is much more forgiving and much easier and um, pleasant to look through. I should say. So I can't compare the 27 to 60 on that, but as far as I, from what I've seen, I would say that they're they're probably pretty close. I would guess neck and neck if we were to do a side by side comparison. But um, anyway, that's kind of the rundown of this guy. Uh, again, if you're interested, check it out. This is another one of those long videos that I don't really like making, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, what I've been using here uh, for my right. spotting scope because I'm right keep uh, at least ever since I've done the upgrade. To this guy I keep getting people asking because um, well, it's kind of funny because when I go back and I look at the video uh, it's really deceiving uh, at the range we're looking at assuming there's not a lot of mirage which mirage can kind of make things really blurry even the best scopes of mirage will um, you know it'll throw a wrench into things and make things really really difficult um, but on the days there aren't mirage especially um, it's really deceiving looking through the spotting camera in that video um, because the, the quality is so clear um, and the zoom level is so high on that 60 power, which is what I'm using most of the time when I'm recording that video. Uh, like some of, some of those shots that were at like 1,200 plus yards, they look like they're at like six or 700 yards. So uh, I'm surprised I haven't seen more comments from people like, you know, that that's not as far as you're saying it is, you know. Um, we of course don't lie about range. We have no reason to. Um, all the ranges are uh, pretty spot on to what we were over shooting those days. So um, it's, it's again, it's really deceiving, kind of funny because I look back on those and it's just so clear in relation to how far away those targets are, especially compared to like the old CMOS cameras I was using before this. So anyway, um, for my use, two thumbs up. I would say this thing's probably a little bit big if you're doing any type of backpacking. You know, most guys are going to do something smaller if they're running through the country. But if you have the ability to throw this in a vehicle um, or you really need that that big objective and that big power for shooting long range, it's really tough to beat something like this without spending like, you know, five, six plus thousand dollars. 
So anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Put those down below. Um, as far as I know, I believe the optic as a whole is manufactured in China. At least I know the lens is. I'm not sure if the body is on that 100%, but um, I don't really get too hooked on where the optic is manufactured. Of course, I do get a little bit excited when everything is manufactured in the US, but it's kind of hard to find that anymore. So again, I don't get too hooked on um, where stuff is manufactured and you know who's manufacturing them really. Um, a lot of the glass from China in the past couple of years has really started to go up. Their quality has really increased. Um, and in this case, um, I think it really shows. So anyway, again, you guys have any questions, put them down below, I'll get back to you guys ASAP. All right, see ya. Ready, Jordan? Yeah. Send it. Yep. Uh, hit, uh, elevation, yep, elevation mint right up to the nine o'clock. Yeah. So you could probably bring it right a minute and be, and be golden. You're gonna shoot for six inch? Okay. Go ahead and send it. Hit low on the post, just off the circle, low right. See it? I don't know if you can see that from here. That's, uh, that's that six inch challenge targets popper at 560 yards send it hit dead center. center nice that wind is not fun what are you holding for wind on that i've gotten anywhere from 13 to 15 13 to 15 miles per hour 